In the Tennessee Valley, uh, there is a nuclear power plant called Belafonte. Um, TVA has spent over $6 billion on this facility. Uh, they recently sold it at public auction for $111 million, uh, which may very well make it the biggest boondoggle in the history of the uh, federal government, uh, uh, particularly with respect to non-defense. Perhaps there are some defense things that are uh, competitive. And for that six-plus billion dollars spent, we've had this much electricity generated, zero. Um, uh, there is an effort now to get that uh, facility completed uh, by the private sector. Uh, there are things that have to be done through the Department of Energy. If there's anything you can do sending the message back, I know that the people of Jackson County, Alabama would very much appreciate it because the University of Alabama has projected that this facility is completed would generate over a thousand jobs with an average salary of $136,000 per job. That's pretty doggone good in the state of Alabama. So uh, with that as a, as a backdrop, um, let me talk a little bit uh, more to the point of this hearing today. Uh, in 2017, there were 50, excuse me, 99 nuclear power plants in 30 states in the United States operating fleet, which generated approximately 805 billion kilowatt hours of energy. This is equivalent to 20% of total United States electrical output and 60% of its emissions free electricity. There's been some comment to that already. I wanted to reemphasize it. Uh, one fingertip sized uranium fuel pellet about this big can generate as much energy as 17,000 cubic feet of natural gas or 149 gallons of oil or one ton of carbon, uh, to kind of put it into perspective. Um, we've got some political interest groups that would just assume that we not have any nuclear energy in the United States or on planet Earth for that matter. Uh, very quickly, can you uh, describe what the impact on America would be if we were to suddenly decide that we're no longer going to have uh, nuclear energy over the next year or two, what would be the impact on the power grid and the ability of America to continue to function as we are today? The impact would be incredibly <clears throat> negative, substantive, and long-term, not only from a resiliency perspective, um, needing to have 24-7, 365 days a year nuclear or electricity available, not just when the, the sun is shining and when the wind is blowing. I would submit that nuclear energy is, has a, an absolute necessary um, role in an all of the above. And don't get me wrong, we need all of the above. But nuclear energy still remains utterly unique. As you indicated, sir, uh, density of power, there is no other power source that pr provides the density of power. There's another interesting fact. We have about 7,700 of all shapes and sizes electricity generating plants around the country, wind, solar, natural gas, coal, you name it, 7,700. Now it's 59 of those sites is nuclear. So less than 1% of all the generating plants in this country is generating 60% of our clean, 20% of our electricity. The density of power is unmatched and the longevity, there is no other source that can go all out, full power, 24-7 for 18 to 24 months. So Let, let me try yes. to interject just for a moment, since I've only got a bit of a minute left, and focus on things that I think the general public can better understand. What would be the impact on brownouts, blackouts, where you have no electricity or electricity rates if we were to eliminate the nuclear power production over the next year or two, like a lot of these political activists over on the left want to do? I can tell you that's exactly what we're looking at the Department of Energy, especially with the, uh, the grid modernization initiative. We are very concerned if we were to exit nuclear, um, the impacts to the stability of the grid, the availability, like Secretary Perry said, whether it's in the, in the winter time or in the summer, we want our family to be able to know that that power is available. And it's not just um, from, from natural made, man-made threats. Um, we have an evolving grid that is increasingly reliant on intermittence that's driven by when the sun is, is out and when this wind is blowing. And that is going to truly challenge our ability to deal with 
not when everything's going well, but when things go wrong. And there will be times, whether it's man-made or natural, and we need to make sure our grid is a is resilient, and nuclear is an absolute fundamental element of that. Thank you, Mr. Uh, McGinnis.